Hello there, good morning. I am Joseph and it is a beautiful, beautiful sunny morning here today in central Portugal. We're in a, we're in a little village today called Val de Prazeres, or the Valley of Pleasures, and it's, uh, it's just outside of Fundao. Um, it's a lovely little village, it's got lots of lovely amenities, it's got cafes, bakeries, uh, it's a health centre, it's got, um, it's got lo lots of lovely things. And we're, uh, we're a couple of hundred metres down this uh, beautiful private little track here. This track is a dead end. And uh, that fence post that you can see just there, that is the very corner of this wonderful plot of land we've got here for sale today. It's, uh, it's a lovely piece of land and I'd like to take you, on, take you on a little walk around it. So yeah, let's take a look. And as we come down to the end of the track here, Everything on the left hand side is included in the sale of the track here. Here's the neighbour's property, not too, not too in your face, and they're the only neighbour that you share the private track with. There's one other neighbour, which we can see, perfect timing, just there. <laughs> not too close, not too close. Beautiful views facing out. And this, uh, and this lovely granite stone ruin here is a minimum of 50 square metres. Looks like it's at least 10 metres long and 5 metres wide, but of course that can be extended. All of the paperwork is tip top, everything's legal, everything is good. You've got these, uh, these lovely old trees on this land as well, beautiful olive trees, beautiful, beautiful olive trees. And lovely cork oaks, holm oaks, you've got a fig, I can see a fig just there. There's quite a lot of fruit tree on this land as well, um, there's not orchards, they could obviously be planted, but there are... Um, uh, enough fruit trees for the house so you've got um you've got your own fig trees your own uh, your own you know um uh, i think there's a cherry tree there's an apricot tree there's, there's a few different varieties of fruit i can't remember exactly what but yeah as we step onto the uh, onto the threshold here very very old very old indeed someone's left the door open for us as well <laughs> I dare say the lock doesn't work anymore and um yeah this uh, this land here has just been just been used for um for the grapevines and uh and yeah that's about it and the olive harvest as well um for however many however many decades when i was standing here a moment ago there was all beautiful goats all walking along the hill over there they've all gone over the hill i suppose they've been let out of their barn for the morning and wandered off to pasture <laughs> they'll have their livestock guardian dogs running around with them keeping them all in check and i could hear all their goat bells which i thought was uh rather cracking i like that there's an old pigsty there you can see the entrance they would have had something out the front here to to stop the uh, keep the keep the pigs penned in. And yeah, this land here is forty five thousand euros. It's uh, it's one hectare, and um, and it's got it's got quite a quite a lot on this land. It's got um, some uh, two water sources, which I'll show you in a little while. They need cleaning out, but but they're there. Um, it's got the vineyard that we saw. We can see there's another a mini vineyard here. Uh, so yeah, there's there's definitely a few hundred liters of wine to be made on this on this property. There's a there's a few hundred few hundred grapevines, stunning views. Even the uh, even the neighbor's house there looks really really pretty. Um, a little citrus grove over there I can see as well. And yeah, very very nice indeed. It is a rather warm day today. It's um it's it's in its it's in the twenties today. It's got to be uh, it's got to be twenty two, twenty three, twenty four degrees, something like that. And it's still only nine o'clock in the morning. So um so it really is uh really is going to be a warm one today, I think. And uh, as we approach the building here, you can see, of course, it is a ruin. Um, that that is not not a problem though. A lot of a lot of people tell me they're they're worried about getting a ruin because they they don't know any reliable builders this that the next thing of course moving to a different country well that's really not a problem because i know i know many many reliable professional and uh, fairly priced contractors um they'll give you a quote and they'll uh, and they'll do it within a certain time frame uh, depending on how you want it either quicker or uh, or longer they'll uh, they'll bring more builders if you wish uh, if you wish for the building to be uh, to be done up quicker of course that's a little bit more costly but but still not not out of the way this is a nice uh, a nice height granite 
granite doorway here. Of course, it could be raised, but I'm uh, I'm six two and I don't have to bend down. It's um, of course in need of a little bit of restoration, to put it mildly. It, uh, it needs a total regutting. Needs complete interior renovation. This is the uh, the old animal shed at the back here. Um, of course, it needs uh, ab absolutely everything, a new roof and everything. But yeah, that's really really not that hard. And as we come round here, I'll take a look in the. Uh, in the other building there's the uh, there's the back end of that pigsty there <laughs> used to be a, a pig or two kept in there and as we come around here oh it's a lovely gentle breeze today very nice very nice indeed we are we are roughly two kilometers from the from the center of the village here so not not far at all it is walking distance although that's uh, somewhat of a walk you might want to might want to drive in for your morning coffee there's some lovely coffee shops here and some bakeries and whatnot and as we come in, same again in this side, in need of total, total renovation. That'll make a nice window out there. And yeah, like I say, around uh, around 50 square metres, um, minimum of 50 square metres. And that can be made into a two-storey building if you built up with uh, either more granite stone or if, uh, or if you've done it in block. That would be uh, the cheaper option to do it in block. Build up and uh, have another floor, maybe a mezzanine or something like that. I think that would be very nice. We need to look around the land. So yeah, let's take a little take a little walk around the land. So as we come down here, the uh, the farm is all split off into separate terraces, uh, which is uh, obviously quite common on these mountain farms. Uh, this farm is just off of the Gardunia Mountain. We're in the slightly lower level here, but you're still still pretty much on the side of the uh, of the Gardunia. We come down here. Pass a load of grapevines, pass an olive tree and a fig tree. And yeah, as we come down here, we are on the, the lowest, lowest terrace. Look at all of those beautiful wildflowers. You can tell there's been no, no nasty chemicals or anything used on this land. And as we come just here, we come to the first water source. It is a water mine, uh, which differs from a well or a borehole. A water mine is dug horizontally into the, uh, into the side of the mountain there. And you can see there's a, a big gap there where the excavator has come in and pulled it out. Um, that just needs just needs a little clean. That can be done uh, in a day, very very quick, and then the water will be uh, be gushing back out again. And that's uh, enough water there to irrigate the whole farm. Uh, well, between the two water mines, enough enough water to irrigate the whole farm with whatever crops you wanted. You can see the um, the land here is is very fertile, very good for um, very good for growing and things. Uh, as is this whole area really, the whole of central Portugal is very very good indeed for growing. Here is the second water mine. You can see here again where the excavator has come in and they've got a ditch that goes this way which is for the excess water. Uh, you can see it's very green in there but it does need does need to be cleaned out. There is water coming out of it now but it's just uh, it's not going to be enough so once that is cleaned out of course uh, you get a few goats on here and stuff or wild boar in the night. They uh, they topple all of their all their mud in and stuff as they come scooting down the hill <laughs> and then um and then it blocks up so so of course that just needs to be cleaned out that'll probably need doing every few years or so every five years or something like that wow there is quite a lot of space on this land here you know there is um for a hectare it feels feels like much more um it goes right up right up around there to the uh, to the vineyard which we saw as we came in um and yeah, lots of space for um, for vegetables, chickens. You've got more than enough space here for uh, for a couple of head of livestock, a couple of sheep, a couple of goats, something like that. And yeah, very very nice indeed. Another fig tree there, I can see, poking through the bushes. <laughs> and we can see now. You can probably see there's all posts over there. That's the beginning of the vineyard. So yeah, let's go take a little look at the vineyard. Right, yo, just scrambled up that terrace there, and uh, <laughs> my gosh, it's warm. Uh, I think it's time to ditch the shirt and uh, maybe stick uh, stick something a bit cooler on. But um, as we come up here, you'll be able to see the vineyard now, and there is uh, quite a lot of grapevines. They're all nicely post and strung, so um, so yeah, really, really well kept. And uh, you can see they're all growing now. The owner will come through here and cut the grass. He's already started, in actual fact. He started on that on that big terrace over there. I'm going to stick a, a drone shot on the screen here so you can see exactly where I am in relation to the rest of the the rest of the property, the house and everything. And you'll see that we're on the uh, 
the top terrace of the farm here. So um so yeah. There'll be all little all little grapes starting to grow on the vines now. Let's see if we can see some. I've just spotted one. There we go. Where am I looking? There it is. <laughs> little tiny cluster of red red grapes. Red wine grapes. So yeah, that's gonna make uh, gonna make someone some uh, some nice vino tinto, some nice some nice red wine. <laughs> that will probably be predominantly red on this farm. I would have thought most of the uh, most of the farms here have um, have a predominantly red wine. Um, they have a, a little bit of white as well. Normally, I don't know about this farm. It's the wrong time of year to tell at the moment. They all look green, but <laughs> but yeah. So it's gonna be uh, gonna be a nice few hundred liters of wine for someone. And uh, and I've just walked here. I didn't know didn't know this little secret secret terrace was here. But have a look. Yeah, as you come along, you've got your fig tree lovely big oak tree there casting quite a nice bit of shade and then a lovely little lovely little, little olive tree and as we come here you've got this semi-circle shaped uh, terrace here i'm standing in the shade it's a bit warm for me <laughs> a bit warm for my english blood and yeah and then you can look out over the uh, over the beautiful views there and uh, you can see goats in the field you, you can't really see them now but i could earlier i could see all goats up in the field there I could hear them more than see them. They were they were barring and bleating away with their bells going. <laughs> and I would stick a nice bench here, maybe maybe back here in the shade in actual fact. And I would sit there and that'd be a nice nice place just to sit with a with a couple of sheep, maybe even a couple of beers. And yeah. <laughs> Radio. I think we've just about seen everything on the farm. Beautiful little place here. If anyone is interested in this farm, please feel free drop me a uh, drop me an email at farmerforfun at outlook.com. And yeah, I can put you in contact with the owner. If you need any translations, it'd be my absolute pleasure to try and help. And yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. But for now, I think I'm going to go back to the uh, back to the village, have a have a nice cold uh, ice cold water or something. A bit early in the day for a beer, although it's five o'clock somewhere, I'm sure. And um, yeah, <laughs> probably head back to my farm and do a bit of cherry picking. Okay, we've just uh, just walked up into the village and uh, grabbed an ice cold water. That was uh, that was necessary today. It's quite warm, and um, and yeah, saw all of the uh, all of the lovely uh, lovely little cakes and things they sell in the bakery here. This bakery does uh, does pizza as well. They have a uh, they have a, a wood wood oven for their pizza. And uh, yeah, there's quite a few things in this village. There's a, there's a pharmacy over there. There's the Agent uh, de Fergusia. There's um, there's quite a few things. There's uh, about three or four cafes. Uh, really, really, really nice village. It's got a train station as well, would you believe? But yeah. Now I'm gonna have my ice cold water. And I'm gonna head back to my farm. Righty home. We're back on our farm now. We're back, uh, back, ready to jump back into the work, into the cherry harvest. Uh, yeah, and uh, a few hours have gone by. Uh, you have to, you have to sort of skip that, uh, that really hot middle part of the day. It's just far too hot to do any farm work. So you need, need to concentrate it to the very early hours of the morning and uh, and the late afternoon. Uh, I am a bit of a, a bit of a sissy when it comes to when it comes to the heat, though. I think it's my English blood, but. Um, but yeah, so I'm uh, I'm going to jump back into the to the cherry harvest now. This week, uh, this week we haven't got I haven't got my my two little girls with me. I haven't got Mariana or Chloe. Uh, Mariana has took Chloe, our daughter, down to uh, down to Sassimbra to see uh, Mariana's family. Uh, so they're all going to have an absolutely fantastic time down there, I'm sure. And Sassimbra is a uh, it's a gorgeous little uh, like a fishing town. Um, right on the coast down there, just uh, about 40 minutes south of Lisbon, I suppose, uh, in between Lisbon and Setchbull. And um, yeah, gorgeous place. So I really wish I was with them, but of course I can't leave uh, during the cherry harvest. So so that's a shame, but I'll go down uh, later on in the year and see them. But anyway, yeah, it's time for us to do our cherry harvest here. All right, mum. Looks like you're deep into, deep into, into cherry sorting there. Yeah, <laughs> same place. Looks good. Yep, very nice, very nice. Rightio, have you got an empty bucket for me? An empty bucket, yeah. I think I did get there, Joe. Oh right, yep, got it. So I've got my empty bucket and it's time for me to go up and pick some cherries. See you in a bit, Mum.
All right, Dad. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Many cherries? Not as much as other years, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think looking at it, we're uh, we're probably probably around sort of eighty percent down, or maybe even a bit more than that. More than fifty, anyway. More than fifty percent down, yeah. So Definitely. quite a big quite a big loss to the crop this year. Yes, yeah, certainly, like the early ones. What do you put it down to? Well, that wind and that that we had and the heavy rain, yeah, that didn't help Matt. It's just when the flowers all come out and that you get a chance to pollinate. That was the problem. Yeah, I know. I noticed um, the beehives were not. They were not teeming with bees when uh, when we had all of that all of that heavy rain, of course. Um, no, they stay in the hives. Yeah, and that was that was right on top of when we had uh, all of the blossom out. So yeah, <laughs> so really not a great year to be a cherry farmer on our farm. But oh well. <laughs> not, but the later ones are not so bad. Yeah, good. The later ones we've got a bit, but yeah. the middle ones really, <laughs> mid earlys and the, and the mid ones. No, but there you go. Have you eaten many cherries? <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Too yeah. many, so there's still um, still enough to go round for the house then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think so. Come on, Mitch. Rightio. We've got our buckets. We've got a few buckets here. If I can get under the tree. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a couple of hours. Doesn't look like it on film, but that was a couple of hours of picking there. Um, the problem when, um, when you've not got so many cherries in the tree, like, uh, like this year, means that um, it does take a little bit longer to get a bucket. So, um, so to get four buckets there, we've got two and two. That took us, uh, took us a good, I don't know, hour and a half or so there, I suppose. Um, and yeah. Sorry, Mitzi. <laughs> um, warm old work. Warm old work in the sun. But um, yeah, it's it's good fun though. Standing there with your dad, chatting along, singing away to each other and stuff. Right, Dad? <laughs> yeah. Stop for a breather, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Give me one of them buckets. No, I'll no. take it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's good fun. Now we're going back. I'm going to get them weighed. Okay, we're now back in the farmhouse kitchen and I had quite a few messages last week where people were asking if I was going to be making a cherry pie this year. So, um, so of course you've all twisted my arm and I'm going to be making a lovely big cherry pie today. So for the, uh, for the dough, I've got, uh, I've got a couple of things here. I've got a couple of cups of all-purpose flour. I've got one cup of granulated white sugar. I've got some unsalted butter here, and then for the filling I've got a few other things. I've got some smashed almonds, uh, I've got a lovely big lemon from my brother-in-law Lloyd's lemon tree, and the star of the show here of course, I've got a, a kilo of our cherries, which are of the variety Preto de Sacco. And uh, yeah, this variety is, uh, is prized for its durable tough skin. It's quite an old variety, and it's specifically here from our region, the Cova de Beira, or from now. And uh, yeah, it's prized for its tough skin, uh, so it transports very well, which used to be fantastic when they rode to Lisbon or Porto on the back of a, a donkey and cart, so the, the cherries would bounce around and not bruise too easily. So a very nice variety indeed. But yeah, as it's, a, as it's an old variety, it's not one of the biggest varieties of cherries, but it's still a lovely sweet cherry. But yeah, let's crack on with that cherry pie.
Okay, that just about brings an end to this week here on the farm. It's been a busy old week again with the cherry picking. I'm sure you're bored of me saying that every week now. But um, but yeah, we're uh, we're all tired. <laughs> but it's uh, it's good fun. It's jolly good fun being up there in the orchard, uh, picking away with your family and everything. It's really really lovely. Of course, I'm missing Mariana and my little Chloe this week. Uh, like I said, they're down in Sasimbra. So um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see them in another week or so. You guys will see them on the film as well, and they can tell you how how much of a nice time they've had. I'm sure. <laughs> But yeah, we looked at that uh, that beautiful property in Val de Presage, and uh, if you're interested in that property, then uh, please feel free to email me at farmerforfun at outlook.com, and uh, if there's anything I can help you with regarding regarding any, anything like that in that subject, then uh, I'd be more than happy to, uh, and I can put you in contact with the owners or whatever as well. But yeah, thank you very, very much for watching. Hope you all have an absolutely fantastic week, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>